third baseman Corey Kosky. He doubled and has popped out. Big swing. And a miss. Want to wish a speedy recovery to Ryan Rowell watching the game in Roscoe, Illinois. Ryan's feeling better. Cubs trying to win number 40 today. All one strike one. a little off. Good pitch. Got him swinging. Two outs in the sixth. Doug Mitkiewicz coming up before he hits. Let's pause for station identification. Minkiewicz one for six in the series. With Joe Carter, Chip Carey, Cubs 10, Minnesota 2. Trying to win the series outright. Get ready for a big ball game tomorrow. Right through their speed, right one. Oakland has scored first. They lead the Giants 1-0 in the sixth inning out in San Francisco. San Francisco team. Three games over 500. Five games behind the Diamondbacks have won four straight. 1-1 one, one pitch. Rusty Baker does an amazing job with San Francisco. Dodgers have won three straight. They're three out of first. We just saw the Arizona team. 2-1. Slap toward the whole left side and through for a base hit. Stopping at second is Lawton. Mitkevich starting to go the other way the last two times in the series, and it's paid off. And here's Torrey Hunter. John Lieber still only on pitch number 88. Doug Mitkevich goes the opposite way, and you say, Chip, he didn't go to the left field very often. He's always been a dead red, dead poor hitter goes there is usually because he has two strikes and he's trying to protect the plate here's Hunter 10 home runs that leads the twins but he's 0 for 2 today and a ball outside one ball no strike Hope Cubs super scout Jim Crawford's enjoying the telecast today Jim watching us down in the beautiful Magnolia state of Mississippi on this lovely Saturday afternoon. And congratulations to all the Cubs scouts, John Stockstill, O'Mary Plata, and the entire farm staff for a job very well done in the amateur draft. Cubs delighted with all their draft picks. We look forward to seeing many of them in the fold here in the next several weeks. A little roller trickles foul for a strike to Hunter. One and two. What a beautiful day. Gorgeous. Me in Chicago, America's greatest city. Sammy Sosa has made his Dominican fans happy today. Two home runs. Four RBIs, three hits, one, two, just missed. By the way, Kerry Wood trying to celebrate his birthday day late, 24 today. To go for his sixth straight win tomorrow. Only 24 years old. Hitters have a long time to look at Kerry, and that's bad for hitters. Down on strikes goes Hunter. Minnesota gets a couple on four hits. They leave two more men stranded. 
As we head to the sixth inning, it's the Cubs 10, Minnesota 2. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of Pepsi. Let's face it, you can get these features on virtually any car. What distinguishes these is that they come standard on a car that looks like this for around 19000 Compare, drive, dodge intrepid. Now with a $2,500 cash allowance or 0.9 financing. We're back on 18th. Annika Sorenstam tied for the lead. What she got, Jim? Looks like an easy wedge, but with the green slope back, she'll have to stop it quick. She eyes the shot. Oh, she's got to be happy with that. Makes you look 20 years younger. Michelob Light, proud sponsor of Annika Sorenstam and the LPGA. Can you swim in that? The Kia Sportage in the Paris Dakar Rally. The most grueling race of the world. 6,200 miles, 100 degree temperatures, 21 days, and no deodorant. The 2001 Kia Sportage, thoroughly tested and backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Right now, get up to 2,500 cash back or 1.9% financing through July 2nd. Sunday, the Cubs gear up for the final game against the troublesome Twins. Sunday morning on WGA. Well, Sammy's hit two out today. Cubs lead by eight runs, and Cubs fans be one of the first 10,000 adults to enter Wrigley Field, and you'll get a Cubs sports bottle, compliments of Lifetime Fitness. Watch the Cubs do battle with the Brewers Friday, June 22nd at 220. The tickets call 1-800-THE-CUBS. Oscar Acosta talking things over with John Lieber. Job well done so far for John. Bob Wells, a rubber-armed right-hander, is in for the Cubs' six. Two and on to Rondell White. He's singled and has scored a run today. He's in the driver's seat, two and oh. A look at Bob Wells. Already game number 30. For the well-traveled right-hander, broke in with the Phillies, mixed many years with the Seattle Mariners, back in 1996, had his best year, won 12 and lost 7. Casey Blake in for Koski at third. Denny Hawking, or Minkiewicz at first. A new center fielder as well, and they say White went around, and he's down on strikes. One man down, McCracken stays in the game. Hunter, Koski, and Minkiewicz are out of the game. So here's Ricky Gutierrez. Ricky has been on base three times. He's homered, he's doubled, he's scored twice, and he lost the red-hot bat, and he comes up shaking that right hand. Well, I would think that he'd want to get this bat back. There seems to be a nice little scramble in the crowd for the bat. Well, he gets a hanging slider, but he... He lets go of the bat with that one hand. And look out below. Many fans may not know that Ricky in his younger days tried out for the U.S. hammer throw team on the Olympics. <laughs> well, Dave, really? Win Dave Winfield's the captain yeah. of that team. Of course, we're only kidding about Ricky. And luckily, no one was hurt on that play. Well, 
Wells misses outside. Well, I know what he's hoping. He said, hey, he probably sent the bat boy someone said, hey, you know, let's trade bat to them. Give them a different bat. I want to keep that bat because that bat was hot. One ball, one strike. That's the first bat that I've seen that actually has the picture of a bat on it. Well, the bat the animal? Yes. Or just the picture of a bat? No, well, it's... Well, see, that's a Raleigh bat. Well, he is using the one with the bat earlier this year. Yeah. That was the Sam bat. Oh yeah, they'll they'll bring they'll bring it back and trade out a kind of a more used bat, but those good bats are hard to find. Players are they get one that feels really good. They want to keep it as long as possible. Ricky line drive right center field. Doesn't matter what lumber the guy uses, he finds a way to get on base. Well, he's three for four. Well, he's been on base all four times. Reached on the air as Matt Lawton. Dropped the ball in right field, but other than that, he has been scorching the ball, home run double, and now taking the ball the opposite field, driving it into center field, right in the field. Here's Gary Matthews Jr. He's got a four-game hitting streak, and he takes a strike. We've said many times, Joe. This game time makes it real tough on the hitters with the shadow. lengthening shadows at home plate and the pitcher in the bright sunshine, or in this case, Wells Bage in the shadow of the light tower that's high above the left field grandstand here. How tough is that for a hitter, and does it make as big a difference as we would think it would? Oh, yes, it makes, a, it makes a big difference, especially when the pitcher is in the sun and the hitter's in the shadows. I fly ball straight away center. McCracken comes in. Back to first goes Gutierrez. The one thing and why why it's so hard when you're pitching in the shadows because the ball is going in and out of the sun into the shadows, back in the sun, shadows. So it causes a reflection there as the hitter. All you see is just a spot. And it's almost like if you're in a car and you're going driving down the highway and you're passing all these poles that go in, out, in, out. All of a sudden, it's very tough to pick the ball up, pick the rotation up, and you won't be able to see the rotation of the ball. I pop fly down the right field line. It'll drift into the seats. And it's a strike to Joe Girardi. Joe today, and Homer, he's doubled, he's driven in three, scored one. He's also walked. The Twins have not retired the Cubs in order once in this game. A four-run, four-hit first. That's been all John Lieber has needed to this point. Cubs offense just kept on pouring it on. Two quick strikes to Joe from Bob Wells. And the breaking ball just missed. Wells thought it might have been good enough. Swing and goes Girardi, and that takes care of the Cubs in the sixth. Lower third due for Minnesota in the seventh. Cubs by eight. Dad, Timmy hit a home run. Great. Put the little slugger on. Hello? I hear you got a big hit today, Timmy. I sure did, Grandpa. I won the game. Sure wish I could have been there. I did, too. Because that's what was said on my birthday. Is that your chair? Want to ride around in leather? The all-new five-door Elantra GT from Hyundai. It comes with the freedom of America's best warranty plan. CD player, side airbags, and leather. All for under 14.5. Excuse me. That's my chair. Nice. Ah. On the 
highway of life, it's nice to be able to call whenever you want. Introducing VoiceStream Wireless. Talk to me. VoiceStream gives you more. 600 nationwide whenever minutes. Just $39.99. Now that's good. Talk about whatever you want, whenever you want. Great. And now. Do you like parties? Get 2,000 weekend minutes. We'll have a great time. I guarantee it. <laughs> so get VoiceStream and get more from life. Nothing beats the fun and excitement of watching the Cubs in beautiful Wrigley Field. And you can be there. That's right. Tickets are still available for upcoming Cubs games. To get your tickets, just call tickets.com at 1-800-THE-CUBS. Head to the Wrigley Field box office. Punch in www.cubs.com. Or visit any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware store. Don't wait. Catch all the Cubs action firsthand and get to the game. 10-2 is our score. Cubs have a hefty lead after six. Before the lower third of the Minnesota Order Pass, we'll step aside and tell you what's coming up later on WGN. To avenge a young girl's death, Charles Bronson is reverting back to his old ways. Death Wish 4. This time it's war. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Todd Dunwoody replaces Rondell White in left field for the Cubs. Chance to get him some at-bats, perhaps. Playing time has been scarce with the good play of Gary Matthews Jr. in center and resurgence of Rondell White. And he'll be tested early as Rivas rips the shot in the left field. Big turn by the rookie. And he'll hold on to the ball. Hey, a bad throw. Might turn into goal. No, not in time. Wow, that throw airmailed Gutierrez and Young. And Rivas with that big turn almost got picked off. Well, the thing is, you talk about being in good position. Ron Coomer doing his job as then when he comes up, makes a strong throw, too strong a throw, hitting the second base, airmails everybody. But look where Ron Coomer is. Right there like he's supposed to be. And he almost beats Rebox back to the bag as Rebox is going. He says, uh-oh, wait a minute. <laughs> And a heads-up play to slide to the home plate side of first base. Otherwise, he might have been toast. Well done, Woody. You know it's fresh. And he showed off a real good arm right there. That was a heck of a throw. Too luckily, good, good arm. Yeah, luckily it could have been a real problem. 2-0 to Prince. And for the first time today, the cup bullpen starts to get working. Hot and muggy day. Todd Van Poppel is up. Don't forget, we're in the seventh inning. Our old pal Gary Gaetti is going to be along to sing the seventh inning stretch. G-Man. Boy, we shudder to think what the Cubs would have gone through had Gary Gaetti not performed so amazingly well for the Cubs in 1998. He did. He came over with oh, St. Louis and just, I mean, helped this ball club turn the corner. It was very big and instrumental in that, that wild card playoff game, a two run home, and they break the game open. 2-1. High fly ball hit pretty hard into center field. Matthews puts the shades down. One out. And here's the home run that broke Joe Carter's heart. That was a 0-0 zero -zero ball game. The wind blown in and off of Mark Gardner and the G-Man came through. And obviously that was a huge home run for the Cubs who celebrated a wild card victory. But the most memorable home run besides that one was the one he hit off Trevor Hoffman in San Diego. Cubs in a 1-1 game, I think. He unloaded into the second deck out in San Diego. Gary was, you talk about the old expression, catching lightning in a bottle. <laughs> they did. He was great. Great guy in the clubhouse. Downstairs, Clinton McCracken. Lined out short. Gary, of course, had a super major league career. Retired. Spending some time with the Red Sox last season. One ball, one strike. Lieber right at the 100 pitch mark this afternoon. Comes to turn one double play. Let's see if we can get another one here. Hot shot, roll foul. And it's one and two to Quinton McCracken. Big baseball story today. Wally Joyner on his 39th birthday announced his retirement. 
He ends his career where it started with the Anaheim Angels. Started with the California Angels and ended with the Anaheim Angels. Same team, of course. Harry Wood celebrating a birthday. Kevin Young a birthday as well today. Two balls, two strikes. Wally Joyner had a real good major league career, too. Well, he started out, a lot of people felt he should have run one rookie of the year. He lost to a guy in Oakland. What was that guy's name? Was that second Seiko? <laughs> there he is. There's G. G. Man, he's all ready to get those vocal cords loose. That, and he's ready to <laughs> climb into the, get to the pits. He's a big, big into the race car circuit. We're going to ask uh -oh. him about that. Still has that race car team. 3 2 pitch. Out back to the screen, and McCracken stays alive. Gary also showed when he was with the Cubs an outstanding curveball. Had one of those blowout games. <laughs> Gary went out to the mound. Three balls, two strikes. And a foul tip strikeout. Two outs. Six strikeouts for Lieber. Well, there's G-Man warming up, ready to go into the game as a pitcher. Showing that great curveball. 34 miles an hour fastball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a bad day. It's a bad day. Here's Jock Jones. Jones with a base hit and a run scored. High fly ball hammered straight away center field. Park's not going to hold that. Jones on low. His fourth home run makes it a 10-4 game, and that was a no-downer. He hit a laser beam. You know, the only bad thing about pitching when your team has 10 runs, sometimes you leave a few balls out of the plate because you don't want to walk anybody. You want to throw the ball in the middle of the plate. John Lieber does that, and Jock Jones, I mean, he crushes his ball into the center field. And like you said, Chip, there was no doubt about it. Fastball right down the middle. With a high finish, Jock Jones unloads. And the balls have been flying out of Wrigley this afternoon. When it gets hot, the ball will jump. And here's Guzman, one for three today. Ground ball, missed double by an eyelash. Give Lieber credit. John today has... Not walk to anybody. You say, look, here it is. You hit it out, hit it out. I've got a eight-run lead. Well, that's exactly what you want to do as a pitcher. You don't want to put anybody on via the base on balls. Give them extra chances to extend the inning. You want to make them earn their way on. And, well, Doc Jones, he earned his way on. Swing and a miss from Guzman. It's nothing in two. Guy's got the Jeff Bagwell goatee going, doesn't he? I like Bagwell's one of them. Bagwell. Down in the middle of his chest, like the guy's on easy top. Look like a Billy goat. <laughs> Jeff Joe said that, didn't he? <laughs> We're in the seventh. Minnesota got two in the sixth. Two so far here. Oscar Acosta would love to see John get through this seventh inning. And then give the Cubs bullpen a chance to start off the clean eight. And he'll do it right down the middle. Seven strikeouts for Lieber and a job well done. Time to stretch. Let's welcome back one of the greats of all time. Former twin, former Cub, Gary Gaetti. Thank you. Hey, is this fun or what? Oh, we are having a good time. And there's a saying I want to say to the Twins and the Cubs in New Orleans. It's laissez-les, bon ton roule. Let the good times roll. Keep it going now. All right, everybody. A one, a two, a three. We out to the
This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Dodge Difference. See the friendly Chicagoland Dodge dealer near you. Of course you got a pet problem. What do you mean? You got food everywhere. Everything they love. Can you blame them? Well, problem is you can't kill them. All you can do is control them. It's go time. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. So that's how they're getting in. You're home for Angel. Los Angeles. They call it the City of Angels. But to Charles Bronson, it looks like hell. Who are you? Dead. Charles Bronson returns in Death Wish 4. The first three times were just practice. This time, it's war. When cocaine cowboys run wild, Charles Bronson says no to drugs. His way. Death Wish 4. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN. 10-4, bottom of the seventh inning. Boy, it's great to welcome back our old pal, Gary Gaetti. Nice job. I, we're having a good time. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, it's, uh, this is baseball at its best. You miss it? I don't miss the pressure of playing, but I'll tell you, the, uh, the, ga the game and the scene at the clubhouse and all that. Ooh, do let a bullet down the left field line. Might be two. He's pinch hitting for Lieber. And Julio will amper into second. I mean, this is exciting. I mean, this is a fun time. I haven't been in the stands in so long. It's just like, we sat down here and watched six innings. It was great. I mean, the fans are great here. And I mean, it's just, I don't know. I wish all the players could take the time to sit up here and listen and watch from here and have a different perspective and then go back out there and play. You have to be happy spending so many of your baseball years with the Minnesota Ball Club, being a part of some very special World Championship team. To see the renaissance of that ball club with Tom Kelly still there with all those young players. I'm excited for them. I know that's how we started. I mean, that's how you build teams. I mean, I'm excited for the Cubs. You never know what's going to happen coming out of spring training. And I'll tell you what, this is a good story right here. This is a good story in baseball. Who worst the first teams, perhaps, yeah. if you'll pardon the expression, as Young stands in. And, of course, everybody in Chicago remembers what you did for the Cubs the final two and a half months of that 1998 season. Ooh. Was that a high note? Oh, yeah. I know Joe doesn't, don't want to remember that <laughs> I think I was disappointed that Joe didn't hit like a laser down the third base. <laughs> That's what he was famous for. I, just, I couldn't believe he popped it up at first instead of hitting a laser down third baseline. I, I, was, I was sitting back. You know, I never faced Rod Beck before, and you, know, you look for a split finger, you get a fastball, you try to foul it off. We were going to beat you guys anyway. Oh, boy, that's what I like okay. to hear. All you right. know it. All right. I love the Giants. I'll tell you what. I mean, they were my favorite team then, you know, as far as who to root for. And so why'd you go deep against us then if you were, that was your favorite team? Well, you know, I signed a contract that said, I'm going to do the best I can do <laughs> okay. every day. So All right. He didn't have to throw it there either. You know that. Three balls, no strikes. Okay. And that's in there for strike one. I didn't right. know you knew French. We. Oui. Really? <laughs> Pick up a little bit in Montreal when I was there and uh, down in New Orleans. And that's the... Uh, I just thought that was appropriate for both of these teams. I mean, let it roll, man. Let it roll as long as you can. Now, what are you doing down in New Orleans? I know you have your home there, you and your lovely wife. We have about 50 acres, uh, mostly pasture. We have uh, some cute little cows or belted galloways. And uh, we got our first little herd. We're going to take, you know, we're just going to try to... I don't know if we're going to get in the deep industry much, but, I mean, we got them kind of a land art. We had our first calf the other day, a little bull, named him Mac, little Mac. We named our farm Home Run Ranch, and we're going to try to name all our cows and stuff after baseball players. Can the next one be uh, Little Joe or something? Well, <laughs> actually, if, if we produce the one, the man is going to be like the man. That's going to be hammered Hank. Oh, okay. Haven't heard. Now, you, you got to have some words. you got to have Puckett in there somewhere, don't you? Puckett's a good one. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Sammy, too. I mean, I mean, we'll see. Who odd nobody out for Miguel Cairo. Yeah, it's a tough time of the Twins. Ten to four. You still involved in the race car circuit? I know that was something you were involved no. in at the end with the Cubs. <laughs> no, we had to kind of, uh, the, the sport has changed so much. I mean, we just didn't really finish up good last year and the sponsorship I mean it's getting real expensive so we just 
kind of had to try to sell the team and end up auctioning off the equipment. So, so from horsepower to cow power. <laughs> <laughs> A little That's bit right. slower. <laughs> uh, Arnie Harris. Is. Well, Arnie Harris, I think, put it best when he sat down. He said, of all the guys that he saw, he never imagined that Gary Gaetti would be punching cattle on his own ranch. <laughs> I never thought I would be either, but I'll tell you what, when I go out there, I just it's enjoyable. I mean, it's just like, I never thought it either, you know? And it's just, I guess once you start doing something like that, it's... Ground ball hit to the left side. Juice Bond has one play. That's as good as a sacrifice. Second and third. One man out, the first base open with Sammy Sosa coming up. What was it like playing with both Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa? Well, it was boring. <laughs> you know? I mean, every day you think, like, well, if he doesn't hit a home run, it's like, huh? You know, it was, that was something, I'll tell you. I mean, it's, it's like a mirror image, you know, you go from one place to another. Right. I mean, we would, Mark would hit home runs every day, and I come over here, and Sammy's hitting home runs every day, and it's like a trading back and forth. It's like, and then to be in St. Louis, it what? really wasn't right. McGuire hit 62. Sammy hit the high fly ball, pretty deep to right, but not deep enough. It will, however, score Zuleta, Julio tags, and comes on home. Boy, Sammy, a big day today. Five RBI. Young holds it second. Julio scores to make it an 11-4 game. Sammy with 62 runs driven in there. Well, a great day for slamming Sammy Sosa as he just missed a three-run homer there. Do the job, get the guys in, and he's getting a chance all those on the eyes. You come in bunches, get him when you got when you got a chance to get him. Is your boy still playing at LSU? College uh, baseball? Uh, no, he's playing at North Carolina State. North Carolina Thank State. I thought it was LSU. Uh-oh. Uh, we had a little controversy George. there. No, they, their season was over. They finished uh, a little bit over 500. Uh, they did well in the ACC tournament. And uh, Joe, actually, he made the all-tournament team. He finished up. He broke his hand about a month before the season was over, which was a bad deal. But uh, they didn't make it to the regionals. Pretty good young team. I mean, it was it was different. Was it tougher playing every day or watching your son play? Watching is the worst. <laughs> I mean, Isn't that the worst? worst. It's the worst. It's like you'd rather be out there with 50,000 Smith fans with a bat in your I'm hand you. rather than sitting there and watching your son, you know, go through that situation. His first at bat this year in the first game, he got up with the bases loaded and nobody out. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I was nervous, nervous, nervous. So what did he do? He got hit. <laughs> he, got <two> strikes, <laughs> he got hit in the leg. And all I was right. like, all right. Pick it for the team. And a boy, big RBI. <laughs> uh, well, I know the no. game, we sure miss seeing your smiling face around these parts and you any thought at all about getting back involved in the game a few years down the road? Where's Andy at? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, I thought about it. I mean, I you know, went to strength training this year with the Cardinals and uh, as an instructor. And I, I love the teaching part of the game. You know, I, I feel like I've got enough experience to sure. probably help out. I, I know it'd probably be a trip back to the minor leagues or something, but, uh, you know, I, I like the game. I like teaching the game. And uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's kind of, it's, you know, nobody's got really any jobs open right now. But I'm going to maybe talk to Jim, talk to Andy, and see what's going on. And... All four outside of Ron Coomer. First and second with two out. Twins have had a real rough time throwing strikes. The ones they do throw have been hit all over the place. Cubs with 15 hits and 11 runs today. And here's Todd Dunwoody. He'll hit for the first time. Second walk. By Mr. Miller. Okay. You get a chance to go out into the bleachers. I mean, because you know, you said you sit there and watch the game for six innings. It's got to be great just to watch the game for the bleachers. And I think we're going to do a game out there probably in August in the bleachers. And today would have been a good time. No, I haven't watched from out there. I did take some time. My last year I was here. We went up in the scoreboard. Sure. Walked up in there. I mean, it's pretty awesome. I, it's got to be hot up in there, too. Then. Yeah, I'm sure it is. A nice view. I mean, there's a lot of nice views here. I didn't realize it. Probably the worst view on the field is from the dugout. Yeah, can't <laughs> see the field. <laughs> like one to Dunwood. Well, it's hard to believe this ballpark. 86, 87 years old. Better shape now than the day it was built. Whoever designed it, I've said, has not been here. Whoever the architect was of Wrigley Field should be the all-time baseball architect because every new ballpark that's built, they try to copy Wrigley Field. No one's ever going to do it. Round ball, foul pass first. It's one and two. 
Todd Dunwood. Cubs leading the Twins 11-4. visiting with former Twin great Cub Gary Gaetti. Perfect job singing the seventh inning stretch. Perfect. Got the note right. Yeah. I've been nervous for a month. Did you. <laughs> you ever imagine you'd come up here and sing this song? No. I got to thank Donna, my wife, for volunteering for me to do this. <laughs> I, I just I was like, oh, they wanted me to do it last year right after I retired, and I was like, oh, it's too soon, you know. And I don't know, blah blah blah. And she kept. Finally, she just volunteered me to do it. That's all it. Right, all right. Because you were you were gonna keep avoiding the situation and say, well, you I know what, I'm, right. I'm busy that time. It, it's tough. Thank you, miss. Down goes Dunwoody. Gary, you look great. Congratulations Thanks. to you and Donna. It's great to see you, too. We right. look Good forward to seeing you, too. The G-Man, Gary Gaetti, and the Cubs lead 11. from Dodge includes one really bad apple. Don't miss the Winston Cup action July 15th at Chicago Land Speedway. Uh, uh, Captain Wing, um, uh, gone? Missy, what are we gonna do? Relax, Johnson. We've got plenty of Red Bull on board. Uh, other one? Really dead? Rock? Stone falling! Don't worry. I'll have the flight attendants pass out the Red Bull. After all, it's the energy drink that vitalizes the body and mind. And and this will help us how? Come on, Johnson, think. We're giving everybody Red Bull. Oh, I get it. Red Bull gives you wings. BMWfilms.com. Beautiful, bright, sunshiny Saturday afternoon. Cubs 11, Twins 4. Todd Van Poppel is on to pitch the eighth. He'll face Lawton, Blake, and Hocking for Minnesota. John Lieber's day done. A very, very good performance. Seven innings, four runs, nine hits. Didn't walk a man and struck out six to make it seven strikeouts for Lieber. And he should win for the seventh time this year. Julio Zuleta stays in the game. He'll play first after recording a leadoff double in the Cubs' half of the seventh. High and tight ball two, strike one to Lawton, who's two for three with two RBI. Well, you have to admire the job that John Lieber did not walking not one twin batter ahead of the, ahead of the hitters, almost every hitter he was ahead of not get behind him and when you do that you're going to be successful he gave his team and he they jumped out to a fourth and lead in the first inning and it was clear sailing from there on Wild straight back boy thanks to gary guy boy he looks terrific lovely wife donna here with him in chicago he's out farming that's just, <laughs> I, that's just amazing casey blake on deck uh, picked a nice cool spot to farm yeah. too new orleans <laughs> New art, New Orleans. Man. It's great to see him. He and family are well. Line drive in right field. Lawton has a three-hit day today. Lead-off single for Minnesota in our eighth inning. And tomorrow, friends, it's the Cubs family game. They'll play the Cubs players in a softball game before the series finale tomorrow the family game sponsored by Accenture 
All the pregame action starts before the Cubs Twins game. It will start at 1.20. There are a few limited tickets available. You can pick them up by calling 1-800-THE-CUBS. And after this series concludes, we go to St. Louis, then we're home to face the Brewers and the Mets. There are a lot of good tickets available for next weekend series. A Monday night game against New York on the 25th. Then the Cubs begin their longest road trip of the year. Four in Cincinnati. Three against the Mets in New York. Then to Detroit for three. That then takes us to the All-Star Game, which will be played July 10th in Seattle. Then it's home to face the Sox and the Royals. Field box office has been and will continue to be hopping. I think it's going very, very quickly for the rest of the summer, and this is a very special Cub year to this point. Don't want to miss out on a summer of fun. One, two to Blake. Ground ball slowly hit to second. There'll be only one play at first, and Blake's retired. Lawton to second, one out. Here's Denny Hawking. Hawking. Came on in the eighth inning against Jeff Patel yesterday and wrapped into a double play. A special summer for the Twins, too. Not only are they having a bang up here on the field. August 5th, Kirby Puckett. The Hall and of Fame. Dave Winfield will be inducted into Superstown. Winfield, of course, former colleague of mine with Fox. Great performer for the Padres, the Yankees, and a host of other teams. Was a superstar athlete at the University of Minnesota, where he was drafted in football, <laughs> baseball, and basketball by the professional league. This Dave was, uh, I mean, some kind of athlete. When, you, when you're six six, about two fifty, you can, you can run, throw, hit the way he could. And uh, I was very fortunate to have him as my teammate for one year in 92. I tell you what, when Big Dave spoke, he was a judge about King of Report. Everybody listened. The all-time arbiter of Kangaroo Court set one to go. Bird fly. Next wing strike going to, I'll never forget, picture of Bird fly 11 in sports over 10, 12 years. He's got the British wig on, he's got the gavel, that crazed look in his eyes like he was a hanging judge. You know, those are fun times, and when you have those type of people on your ball club, you can have the kangaroo court, the guys really dress up, imitate the judge. I was a teammate of Bert. You see Bert talking with, with Gary Gaetti, but being a teammate of Bert in Cleveland, he would dress up like that. And another good friend of mine who was a heck of a judge was Phil Nutsky Negro. Now he would, I mean, he had the wig. Oh, man. Everything. He was very good, old Nuxy. One ball, two strikes to Denny Hawking. That was one of my thrills as a kid growing up. Getting to spend some time with my dad during the summers. He was a bat boy for the Braves. And tell me, girl, called me over as a 10-year-old bat boy. He said, let's go play catch. I'm playing catch save with Nico. He threw me a knuckleball. He said, no. He said, come on, I'm a catcher. He threw me one. Bam. Hit me right in the nose. <laughs> Oh, what a competitor he was. 300 game winner. What a nice man, too. Boy, boy. He played on some really bad Atlanta teams, but always was in double digits in the league. I mean, he wasn't. Well, the thing is, and, you know, his last year he played, well, he came from Cleveland and went to Toronto. And his last season in Cleveland, he's something he said he always wanted to do. He wants to steal second base. Uh-oh, fly ball hit pretty deep to right. Sammy backing, 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 has it. Two down, tagging at second, moving to third lot with two out. Well, he wasn't exactly a speed demon, though, was he? No, he wasn't a speed demon, but a funny thing happened. He had just won his, his, his one victory where they put him and his brother Joe Negro over the top as far as most wins by brother combination. The next day... About the seventh inning, all of a sudden, we're on the field, and Phil Negro comes out of the dugout with a, had a hat on, a bandana around his face. He runs out to first base, looks around, runs and steals second base, picks it up, and runs into the dugout. 
He said, I always wanted to steal second base. I love it. I love it. I hope he's well. He's probably somewhere back down there in the south. Fishing yeah, somewhere. you got to figure he's down in Atlanta someplace. Boy, that knuckleball. Talk about a pitch that's become a lost art. Even more guys ought to throw it. Tough to control. You talk about being able to pitch virtually every day with that particular offering. Uncle Ball is the ticket. If you can it. It's hitting for Hunter. You saw what it did for guys like Tom Candiotti. Charlie Huff. Tim Wakefield. The Negroes, of course. Boyd Wilhelm. Yeah. When you think back to the early 90s, Tim Wakefield pitching for the Pirates almost single-handedly won the National League pennant yeah. for the Pirates because he came back on such short rest. The Braves... To this day, still can't hit him. He was. Jim was very tough on a lot of hitters. Like you say, that year in 1990, he brought the Pirates back, and he could pitch every two days if he needed to. Well, the Metzen family watching us in the Jayhawk State of Kansas. They used to watch Joe play at Wichita State. Believe it. Happy 50th birthday as well to Susan Metzen. Sending along greetings on the internet. Cannon stays alive, one and two. Classic oh. matchup tomorrow. Well, Gary Wood, Brad Racky. The mound. Two duelers out there. You know, Gary Wood going to be throwing a lively fastball, good curveball, but Racky would be equal to the task. He's an American League Greg Maddox-like pitcher. And he's a good one, folks. He's 8-2. 1-2 to Buchanan. Two balls, two strikes. Our senior producer-director today in his 38th year is Arnie Harris. Cubs baseball on WGN, produced by Pete Toma. Eric Welch is our associate producer today and the executive producer of WGN Sports. Bob Borwalk, line drive to right, takes care of the Twins in the eighth. All Cubs all day, 11-4 your score. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom, 30 years, one mission, low fares. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by CarQuest Auto Parts. You'll find it at CarQuest. G'day, I'm Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter. you got to watch my newest croc week. Tune in every night for a full week. Coming soon, only on Animal Planet. You'll see more bites and close calls than ever before. But no worries, mate. No matter how fast those critters were, I was always faster. Except maybe for that last one. Croc Week is coming soon. Only on Animal Planet. Cubs fans, beware of tickets from scalpers or brokers. You may be buying lost, stolen, or counterfeit tickets that will deny you access to the park. Avoid disappointment. Purchase your Cubs tickets in advance or on the day of the game at the Wrigley Field box office. Or call 1-800-THE-CUB. Weather with Tom Skilling on Chicago's very own WGN News. The fate of an alien race depends on the human spirit. Earth Final Conflict, Sunday at 5 on WGN. Hot day in Chicago. The Cubs bats equally warm. 11-4 the score. The Cubs have hit five home runs today. Girardi one. Gutierrez one. Sosa two. Eric Young led off the game with one. And some divided loyalties in the seats. And Dave Tubbs, the fine trainer of the Cubs, is trying to keep everybody cool with a wet towel in that tub dugout. This feels like the first day of summer. It's been cold and wet here in Chicago most of the spring. A very warm temperatures day. Minnesota goes to the bullpen again. That looks like LaTroy Hawkins has been real good in the closers role. 16 saves for the Twins. Lately, though, he's had some trouble getting his breaking ball, though. 
A chance for him to tune up today. Minnesota's down seven runs. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Hawkins certainly qualifies in that category for Minnesota. Hawkins sent to the bullpen last year, had 14 saves in 66 outings. This was a guy that was 26 and 44 as a major league starter. But they liked his arm so much, they sent him to the bullpen. He has taken to it like he's been destined to it his entire life. Well, the thing that would make the American League so tough is because the pitches don't hit, they would tend to stay with the pitches in the game a lot longer, and so guys would get a chance to face every pitcher three or four at bat. So the more you're familiar with the pitcher, the better your chances are of getting hit. And that's what happened with Troy Hawkins. Guys have seen him three or four times a game. They got used to him, but in the bullpen, he may be only faced the lineup one time. But it's very tough to be successful facing a pitcher only one time. What a rough day for Tom Kelly and the Twins this afternoon. They've used six pitchers now. And Hawkins blows the fastball over the outside corner. One man down in the eighth. They're really open. Brad Radke can turn in a Brad Radke-like performance tomorrow. They'll need it. Well, you talk about hitting the corners. We take a look from the southwest camera plane view, high above Wrigley Field. And there she lies up there. This is the Troy Hawkins with 19 base on balls and 20 strikeouts. They're trying to get that control problem situated. He goes like that. He can be tough. He's a big hombre, 6'5", <laughs> 204 pounds. He went 14 for 14 at the end of last year in save opportunities. And ground ball hits to the left side. Matthews can fly, but he can't outrun that play. Guzman deep in the hole at short makes a good effort. Two up, two down in the eighth. Matthews ends his day. One for five with an RBI. Here's Girardi. Joe's had a fine day. Two hits, three flies, a home run, three driven in. Came very close to having a two-homer game. He missed by inches of putting one in the left center field basket for a three-run shot, but came right back next inning and hit a bullet. We talked at the beginning of the show, too, about how these teams were really somewhat mirror image. Cubs having more power, Twins having more speed. Another example could be in the final two pitchers of this ball game. Well, Troy Hawkins, a starter with great stuff who couldn't get it done in the starting role for Minnesota. Kyle Farnsworth is warming up in the Cup bullpen with overwhelming stuff who has flourished in the bullpen. Well, these guys can throw exceptionally heat. Kyle Farnsworth, a few times been clocked over 100 miles an hour. Well, Troy Hawkins can bring it up there, too. It's been a revamped bullpen on both sides, and it all starts and ends with the pitching. Two balls and a strike. This guy gets it up there in the mid-90s. Your fastball is that good. You can hit the spots. You may not need that breaking pitch. Well, and then when you when they allow you to have the high strike, you want to use that to your advantage. Ground ball to the right side. Should be easy. And here it is. Hawkins tunes up very nicely. One, two, three, and out go the Cubs in the eighth. We go to the ninth inning. Cubs 11, Minnesota 4. I think I sell the same glasses at four eyes for a lot less. Yeah, but they're not the same. These glasses speak French. Je ne meurs de ma vie. At four eyes, you get designer frames, not designer prices. Who makes the best minivan? At Dodge, we make them great and grand. We make them front wheel drive and all wheel drive. We make them with traction control, remote control, even seating, and cargo control. In fact, Dodge Caravan gives you more choices than any other minivan, including the only choice that's under 18,000. See, compare, drive. Dodge Caravan. <laughs> He's failed again, Master. Well, don't just stand there. Bring me brain number 250. But, Master... Why don't you try Red Bull? Huh? Red Bull? You just never listen. Red Bull's the energy drink that vitalizes the body. 
What? What a beautiful body. Oh, oh Tom, we are going to be famous. But Red Bull also stimulates the mind, Father. And I'm going off to be a thespian. You know, Shakespeare in the park and all that loveliness. Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Come on, Billy, baby! Thanks, Coach. Dunkin' Donuts culotta for those quiet summer days. Buy any culotta at regular price and get a free kid's admission to the Brookfield Zoo with adult paid admission. The lenses are extra. At four eyes, they're free. Yes, that's true. But we have this. At four eyes, you get designer frames, not designer prices. Can I help anyone? Well, an early happy Father's Day to you and yours. Father's Day tomorrow, don't forget. Make sure you call Dad, wish him a happy day. 11-4 for the Cubs today. And into the ninth we go. Kyle Farnsworth takes the hill for the Cubs for a capacity, and we mean capacity crowd, of 40,604. The Cubs actually had to turn people away today. There were no seats. There were no spots available for sale. And that might be the story of the rest of the year. There are tickets available tomorrow, next weekend against Milwaukee, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday against the Mets. And that closes out the schedule until July the 12th when the White Sox are here. And you know that series will be big. packed to the rafters. Big series. Well, they're all big series right now. Cubs three outs away from taking two from the AL Central's top team, the Minnesota Twins. And Kyle Farnsworth, his amazing season continues today, is ready to go. Fastball strike. 52 strikeouts, most, by a National League reliever. I think he should be an all-star myself. I don't get a vote. Bobby Valentine does. Well, it's very hard, really, for a setup guy or middle reliever to be in the All-Star game because the notoriety always comes from the starters and the closer. But you're absolutely right. Kyle Farnsworth has just been, done a tremendous job. It's amazing what confidence and that high strike will do for you. Added a split finger, too. Oh, that's so fair. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, he's strike one, strike two. And I think the biggest play of the game for him this year was that home run up in Montreal. Andy Tracy took him out in a 4-1 game. Farnsworth said, look, you hit a fastball, you hit it a mile. I still got the lead 4-2, and the shot that Arnie Harrison, our crew got of Kyle, just shaking his shoulders and saying, okay, you got me. Rubbed up a new baseball. The old Kyle Farnsworth would have continued to have some problems. Took it off, came right back, got the next two guys, and the Cubs won that game. He has been brilliant. Before that and since. How about that play? <laughs> two and two. Well, you see, Lewis Riva. I mean, this ball is almost in the catcher's glove of Joe Girardi before he's able to foul it off. The ball gets up on you in a hurry. I mean, you take a look at. I mean, he, he look at there. He hit this ball way behind him. I mean, it was in Girardi's <laughs> glove. Lucky to even get a piece of that. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Three balls, two strikes. They're watching us down in Belize. Greg Pott. Right along with Tom Pennell and his family. They're watching us on the super station. A little ground ball. Farnsworth will make easy work of Reebok. One out the ninth. No save opportunity. The lead too great. A chance for Farnsworth to stay in a healthy rhythm. Here's Tom Prince. Prince 0 for 3 on the afternoon. 0 for 6 in the series. Cubs 11, Twins 4. Two outs away from our 40th win of the year. Wow. 
He's starting to get loose. Just in case you wondered what the Cubs record was this date last year. Look that up for you. It's been an amazing turnaround. Nothing in two. Reming takes another shot. June 16th of 2000. The Cubs were 28 and 38. Ten games out of first place. What a difference a year makes. That. And a revamp. <laughs> Two strikes to Prince. Well, you had to tip your hand to Andy McPhail and, and the job of Don Baylor. You know, and when you're a new manager coming into a new situation, it takes about a year for really the, the brain trust and the guys to get used to how you're going to manage. Don Baylor has, has shown the potential that he has and done a great job by pulling all the right strings. Unhittable pitch. <laughs> Prince swings and misses. Might have been the split finger. Whatever it was, it died down and away. Two outs. Base is empty. Well, that gets very tough. When you got a 98 mile fastball, then you come to the split finger. It goes down the way. I mean, as a hitter, you just shake your head and tip your hat. Two outs for McCracken. McCracken 0 for 2. Wood versus Radke tomorrow. Blazing fastball inside, ball one. Cubs will maintain the six-game lead over the Cardinals. We'll face them Monday night. Ball, one strike. Milwaukee is six and a half games back. Make it seven games back as they were beaten in the continuation of a game yesterday. They're getting ready to go in game two up at Miller Park. The division starting to be separated by this tough streak. 1-1. One, one. Little ground ball toward short. Ricky's got it. Long for a cross. Cubs win. 11-4. And the Cubs win the series outright. Total highlights from a raucous Wrigley right after this. From the unforgettable series finale. I must put things right. Athena, warrior princess. Between the past and the present. Between this world and the next. I hope to put the right things to Lies Zena's ultimate fight for honor, justice, and love. Forget what you've heard about the ending. See the truth for yourself. Zena, the last battleground. Saturday, June 23rd on WGN Chicago TV. The CRV from Honda. It'll take you to the mountains. It'll take you to the beaches. It'll take you to the desert. It'll take you just about anywhere. But it won't take you to the cleaners. The CRV from Honda. For a limited time, get special APR financing as low as 3.9% for 36 months on new CRVs. Yeah? Or like peanuts. Like any some peanuts? Like any cashews and cashews, you know? Hey, pick it up. Want to go buy some lottery tickets? Yeah. considerable change in pickup and it's been the inspiration for change among pickup owners as well in just four years more than one million households have switched to Dobbs trucks it seems when the owners of those other trucks get a good look at Ram they begin to see things differently 
Now get up to $2,000 cash allowance or low APR financing on Dodge Ram. Mr. Who? Your wife. More shameless. Your mother isn't here with us, Harris. Would you like to leave a message? Yes, Mom. Will you get out of there, please? <laughs> You're no fun. More merciless. <laughs> Cubs beat the Twins 11-4 behind five Cub home runs today. Sammy Sosa had two of them. A huge day for Sosa. Three hits, two home runs, five RBIs. And his second blast of the day, his 19th of the year, is our Budweiser play of the game. John Lieber wins it. He's 7-4. Brad Thomas, the loser. He's 0-1. And the biggest crowd of the year, over 40,600 on hand to see him. We go for the sweep tomorrow. Kerry Wood and Brad Radke were on the air at 1 o'clock with the award-winning leadoff man. For Joe Carter, Chip Carey, and our entire crew, final score, Cubs 11, Twins 4. We'll see you on a very happy Father's Day tomorrow. Chicago Cubs baseball, brought to you by Michelob Light. For a smooth, satisfying taste, you won't find it in ordinary light beer. Beer or Michelob Light. Dodge Difference. Be the friendly Chicagoland Dodge dealer near you. Illinois Lottery, where players have more fun. Pepsi, the joy of Pepsi.